Uh, yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, this is Bang Bang Ray Hill uh, again. Um, do you know, it is, uh, years ago you talk about things that's happened and this, that, you know, where we was talking uh, last night, I had a little drink in there, I don't really drink that much anyway, but I had a little drink in my pals and uh, I was talking about the White Art. Anybody remember the White Art Acton? Mate, that was a proper club, the White Art Acton, yeah? I mean, I've seen, I think I've seen the Temptations there, I think it was the Temptations, I'm not quite sure. Or it was a group acting as the Temptations, I'm not quite sure. But uh, we had a club called the White Art in Acton, it was not next door to the police station. And it was a big, it, it was a, not a big club, but it was a club that everybody, everybody went. And on the door, there was a guy called George. George Manning, or Joe Manning, George Manning I think his name was, George Manning, Freddie Manning. Uh, another kid called Joe, with a big scar down his face. And another kid called Dennis, yeah. And, and a guy called Dave, that has so many bounces on a door there, but they just take, take turns, you know what I mean? But Dave was a cab driver, uh, George, uh, George Clark, uh, he was a really, really hard man, a uh, really, really wiry fella, but really hard, could never work for it. Freddie Clark, uh, he fought uh, Tommy Farr, I think, he fought Tommy Farr, good fighter. He, he had a bad accident, I think he fell off something, or fell off, or whatever he fell off, and, hit his head and, and smashed his sock to pieces. And uh, he couldn't walk, you know what I mean? Found it very, very hard to walk, but very, very hard man. He took more than that. He a bit of very, very dangerous, hard man, can never work a fight, yeah? It was unbelievable to see someone on the door that can hardly walk, but this man can have it, yeah? Anyway, all, I mean, the, the, I just got in the, uh, in the uh, it was the right little handful, yeah? We were always a uh, fight, you know, always, always, always trouble. And uh, this particular day, um, there was trouble in there. Uh, he's called uh, Mickey Everton, he caused it, uh, with Tommy Green. Tommy Green's the one who'd done uh, jo Joe Ralph, who shot him, shot him and all this, that and the other. And um, it was Tommy, there was me, Freddie Green, uh, Gary Jaitman, Keith Jaitman, uh, a few other people in there, in the White Hart and Sue Jaitman. Uh, there was a lot, quite a few people uh, in there, and um, all of a sudden it kicked off, yeah, it kicked off. Mate, it was murder in, their, murder in their glasses, chairs, bottles, everything. I mean, absolute murder. The bouncers uh, got a really good fucking hiding, really, in a way. But then we got to come out of the club, and uh, and then there was Dave and Joe on the door. Mate, and then we tried to get through there, and it was just murder. So, and when and as we got outside, everybody's outside. You know, there's police stations next door. As it happens, no police there. That was crazy. And all of a sudden, it went and kicked off outside. And uh, I remember Mickey Everton kicking old uh, uh, George Joe in the in 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 the in the in the, in the, in the, in the August downstairs, and he fell to the floor. But then he chased him, and then it kicked off. And Freddie Freddie Clark, uh, he was getting bashed up at that time, but he wouldn't go down, mate. He would not go down. He was fighting like a soldier. Joe Joe or Joe Clark, uh, he had a right well. I mean, there's been murders in that club. When he move on and. Everybody remember, everybody remember the uh, Boathouse accent and the Boathouse accent. I mean, I've said these things before, but the Boathouse accent, we've all talked about these clubs and everything that we used to have, the fun we used to have, yeah? And uh, remember the Boathouse accent, uh, just across uh, Kew Bridge on the right hand side, it was massive. Big, 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 big pub and a uh, big drink downstairs, big club upstairs. And you go there and there's a guy on the door called Molly Bush. Yeah, but let's tell you about uh, the Clarks. Manny, uh, my mate, there was a guy I met in, in the Mount, and his name was Manny Clark, and he was jo Joe, uh, Georgie Clark's uh, son, or Joey Clark's son, George, I think, Georgie Clark's son. And I'll tell you what, this Manny Clark never what a fight. I mean, he was like his dad. I mean, he respected, he was, I was talking about his daddy, he didn't know too much about his dad, really, I talked talk more, more about his dad than what he knew, yeah? But his dad was a proper, proper hard man. Manny Clark was a hard man. Manny Clark came into uh, fighting, uh, bare knuckle fights and uh, boxing, and uh, he, he's got a few uh, trophies for it, you know, uh, street fighting, uh, illegal fights. A good fight, Manny Clark. I mean, there's a lot of people that must know Manny Clark. Uh, I respect him, mate, and uh, hello, Manny. How you going, mate? Uh, anyway, so uh, moving on to the boathouse in, in, uh, in Chiswick, uh, well, it's Kew Bridge, actually. Kew, Kew, it's like Brentford, Chiswick, that area. And uh, that place, mate, that place was banging. That place was a banging place upstairs, mate. God, it was crazy upstairs. And there was a bouncer on the door called Molly Bush. Molly Bush, uh, he was like an actor, a big actor. 
I think the Derek and other guys called Derek used to go there, big big guy in a beard. He was aggro, he was called up but Moy was the worst. Moy was always getting drunk and causing plenty of trouble. Yeah, you know what I mean, boy. And so he said, oh, why is it big bouncer talk like that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, that's uh, he used to call plenty of trouble. And uh, I remember one time I went up there and I was always listen, I worked in the foot market, yeah. And I was a bit of an handful, really. I mean, we used to fight all the time in the food market, and I've done I've done my little bit of, I think I've done my detention, I've not done, done my ball So I come out, I was still a bit of an handful, you know, a bit of a white handful, really, coming out of ball stool because you're all lively and you're very, very fit. I haven't got my YP yet, and uh, come down there and we're causing murders, yeah? Big punch ups. We used to love a fight. Love a, love a fight. I used to love it, mate. It was like one of the things you go out for. On a Friday night or Saturday night, I know people go to call it. As soon as I see you come in the club, they know it's going to be off. You hear them saying, Cold up, Wales just coming in. I'm going, I'm going, Wales just coming in. You know it was going to be a kick, kicked off yet. And uh, anyway, this particular time, I had a white fight in there. I got chucked out. And uh, a couple of days later, we went back, went back and we couldn't go in there. So we went downstairs to the bar. And as I walked in there, a couple of guys said, yeah, it's Rayul. And uh, if that's bad, I said, always that and the other. And it kicked off in there, yeah. And uh, I nutted one, and, and then it was off. I mean, it was really off. And they tried to do me with a bottle and a glass, and they missed out. And I, I, I had a white punch up me, a white punch, all, all my pals, Leslie McIntyre. Uh, I'm not quite, uh, I think Johnny Wills was there. Johnny Wills, yeah, I think Ray Wills, I'm not quite sure Ray was there. Ray Wills, uh, Johnny's brother, but it kicked off. Bobby Collins was there. I remember Bobby Bobby Collins being there. I think Wacker was there, I'm not quite sure. And it kicked off. It really kicked off in there. And we had a big bounce up downstairs. And uh, the bouncers got involved. One of the bouncers hit me on the chin, boom, hit me on the chin, rocked me a bit. Oh, fuck me, you know what I mean? So I said to the bouncer, I said, come on, man, you're outside. Big guy. I'm not saying he's a big guy just because he's a big guy. The bouncer, the MDAs were big, yeah. So I went outside, his brain is hitting me, right? And I thought, right, here's my chance. Kicked him straight up, kicked him straight up the orchestras, yeah. And uh, he, he hit the floor, and I come out, whoop, bang! I beat him so hard on the chin. He went over, and all the bouncers chase us. And I've, I've told you this before, but um, it's all part of the story. And uh, we run over the Q, Q Bridge, and as we were going over, the, and some guys that uh, got a bit larry. And uh, me, Leslie McIntyre, I'm, thinking, I'm not quite sure if it's Johnny Rawls or, or Ray Rawls or Big Bobby Collins, I'm not quite sure. But it was with us and uh, get hold of my mate Leslie Black, he got Black, my, my mate Black, but can have a fight. And the two got hold of him and chucked him over the, and chucked him over the bridge. On my life, they chucked him over the bridge, couldn't believe it, yeah. They chucked him over the bridge, man, into the water. Uh, I didn't even know Leslie could swim. Uh, more like he couldn't swim, but he was good underwater. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, these guys shot off, and this we, we, we're looking for Leslie, and we see him over the other side of the water, coming out, come, climbing it, climbing his stairs. I love to tell you what, it was either it was in or out the the, the current, but if it had been it, it, it the drowned, definitely, I'm percent it drowned. You know what I mean? But I see him the other side walking out, and we got him. And then uh, anyway, then we used to go down a club called uh, the the Castle Richmond. Everybody remember that Castle Richmond? That was a good club, mate. The castle, was cheeky. I think it was cheeky pizza. Then I'm not quite sure. There was a, there was about four or five different clubs in there, and uh, we used to go down there, and some big bouncers on the door there, mate. Some big bouncers on the door, and uh, we, we was murder. We was always like murder. And especially Leslie McIntyre, he was so so horrible for the women, yeah. And uh, he used to get, get him a good black, a good looking black guy. I just, I just had to talk. I was very very shy. I couldn't get a boo, but I was shy. You know what I mean? Anyway, um. Lazy kicked off in there, like, you know, like, um, straight onto the women. And he, <coughs> pardon me, he doesn't really care who it is and what it is. And uh, he, he got involved with the wrong, wrong girl, and then it kicked off again. And then we had a big punch up in there. And it, listen, we really come on stuck this time. <laughs> we, come on stuck. we come on stuck. And there's only three of us in there. I'm not quite sure how so we kicked out. It was, I don't know, Bobby Collins. Wacky Collins, Philip Collins, Johnny Wells, Ray Wells, I don't know who it was, but we used to stick together as a little firm, you know. I'm not quite sure which one it was, but um, anyway, we, we won. 
<laughs> we had to run. This firm was after I said, get orders and kill us, yeah. And we had to run, yeah. And uh, my head was bleeding. I got hit across here with a bottle. And uh, I think someone else was being stabbed. <laughs> Sure. Uh, there wasn't a lot of stabbing in them days, but people did have uh, uh, knives and things, yeah? But it wasn't so what it is now, yeah? Little pen knife, little flick knife or whatever, but you still get stabbed, it's still not not nice, yeah? And one got stabbed and we were all running down and we got to the station, Richmond Station, and we jumped over the barriers. No, we ran through the barriers because the barriers were wide open, it was late at night. Got on the train, and uh, in them days, I mean, the train's really, really old, you know what I mean? <laughs> And you got all the handle, put, get up, pull the handle out, got on the train, and you're waiting for the train to go, and you got all these geezers <laughs> trying to, you don't know where they're going to come in, and so anyway, we was lucky we got away with it. And, uh, you know, and then we went we went back there about, what, I don't know, four or five weeks later. Uh, we'd had a little bit of trouble in the white accent again, so we went down there. And I uh, went down there, mate, and it was a good night. We had a good night. And I, I never forget, I had this Prince of Wales check suit on. Prince of Wales check suit on. Honestly, I had these uh, boots on, like shoe boots. And I had a trawby hat on, um, a tie, looking really crisp and smart, yeah? We'd just been to a wedding and a uh, carnation and all that. Uh, went to a wimpy bar, just around the back from the from the from the. Uh, the uh, castle, Richmond, and uh, when in that, as I walked in there, uh, waiting, some guy said, oh, that, what do you think, you're a gangster? Or a clown? Something like that. Like, Pardon me? He said, what, are you a gangster? Or a clown? Three of them together. I went, no, mate, not at all. He went, oh, look at you, who do you think you are, mate? I went, listen, one minute. Walked outside, I said, come outside, you fool. So they're standing there, like three of them together, right, it's going to kick off, yeah? I've got, definitely got Bobby Collins outside, Philip Collins, and Wacker Collins, and a few other people outside. It's going to kick off, we to kill them. But there's three of them, I walk in, I can hear Bobby Collins. <laughs> I can hear Bobby Collins saying, leave it to me, don't worry, sort it out, I do it, sort it out. I stood in the middle of these three, I'm not joking, I stood in the middle of these three. Whack, I've done my other right hand. Crumb over the left hook and kick one out of the balls, yeah? And uh, they was gone, mate. I mean, we steamed in and bashed them all up. I mean, we all steamed in there and bashed them up, yeah? But they was knocked bulk out and then Bobby Collins went, yes, mate. Bobby Collins used to say, yeah, never, ever get in a phone box with Ray Hill because you're going to get killed. <laughs> At that time, as a kid, it's murder, isn't it? You know? I mean, you don't, like, I, could, I could really march on as a kid, you know, really have a fight, you know, and as you get on, it gets worse, and it? you get more more powerful and all that. So we stand with these kids and we left them, and uh, we're walking up towards a club on the bridge. Um, I forget the name of it. Uh, it's a club on the bridge. Uh, we want to go night, have a night there, <laughs> put a cat summit or something. I'm not quite sure. As we're walking up, mate, these people. No, sorry. As we're walking, as we're walking down the road <laughs> to get to the club, these people come at us in the car, right? Bobby Collins. It was Bobby Collins. Bobby Collins pulled me out of the way. The car went straight through the shop. Yeah, smashed the shop. But they can't kill us. These guys. <laughs> All of a sudden, we try to get him. They reversed up and shot off. Well, Bobby Collins. Had a, uh, a 3.8 or something like that, a, a, a Jag, and he really souped it, up, souped it up. I mean, he used to love souping his cars up, Bobby Collins. He got in his, uh, it was green, I think, got in his uh, car, mate. He was, we all got in there, mate. We chased these people, we lost them in the hand, around Ham, that area. And I suppose, like, they must have lived around there because we couldn't find them, <laughs> you know what I mean? And we're shooting around and we couldn't find them, yeah. But I really got hold of them, they was going to get killed. I mean, literally killed. <laughs> Don't worry about that, mate. They tried to kill me, you know, because I bashed free up. Or really, we shouldn't have steamed in so long. We did, but we did, yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, then that moves on. We moved on. I went to a club in Twickenham. Was it Twickenham? Yeah, uh, yeah Twickenham. Uh, and was it Twickenham? No, Putney. Putney, went to a club in Putney. And um, there was a few people in there that I don't really know. It was a club down the stairs. And went in there for a little drink. I don't really drink. That's, the, that's the good thing about me. I was always on par, you know what I mean? I thought, nah, I don't, 
if you get drunk, you're open to anybody, you know what I mean? I haven't really, uh, I've, just, I've just started to get a name. I didn't want people, too many people to get me drunk and then take liberties with you, you know what I mean? So um, I didn't really drink. I had a drink, but not not, not heavy drink. And uh, we was in there, and Leslie, Leslie McIntyre, and uh, I'm not quite, I think it was me and Les. I don't think it was anybody else, it's just me and Les. And uh, having a little drink, Leslie could drink, and Leslie's more or less the same as me, really. He don't really drink that much. He was a pro then. Leslie was a pro with uh, Georgie Francis and Mickey Duff. And uh, we went, as I said, we were down there, having a little drink, and um, all of a sudden, uh, as it is Leslie, they're all the same. We don't stop chatting to, to, to girls. And this time, it was the same people as him. There's was some black guys in there. And it kicked off, mate. It really kicked off. I mean, we were lucky not to get killed in there. I mean, Leslie got stabbed about four times. Uh, I got stabbed, but not bad, in the back of the neck. Uh, it was luck. I was lucky it was more a slice, more than a stab. Uh, we was lucky to get out. Leslie uh, had to go to Amherst Hospital uh, in Duke Cunning Road. And we wasn't far from, from, from another, uh, what's it called? I forget the name of the hospital, but Duke Cunning Road, Leslie lives near there, so he, he went to go there. I kept Leslie in there for about four days. He, I mean, he had some bad, he had some bad stab, uh, stabbings, you know, really, really, I mean, I'm on about bad, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, not death threatening ones, but bad in the arms and the legs and the arse all around them, areas, yeah? <clears throat> because as he was fighting, these people with blades tried to cut us up. We got out of there with skin of our teeth. I was so, um, we got in the cab, Leslie's pouring with blood, hospital. I mean, when the police come, I just said, look, we got set about down the street, mate, walking down the street. I don't know who these people are. Just jumped out of the car and started having a row with them. That was the only way out of it. And they left it at that, yeah. Wasn't no cameras on the streets then, so we very lucky, you know. And then after that, yeah, I mean, after that, then I get my, I'm down the foot market and I get my YP, yeah. I get my YP, I've already done my ball stall, and I get my YP. And uh, this is when I start as a YP, yeah. I mean, I go to Owlsby, Owlsby YP, and um, as I go there, like, it's, Owlsby was a good, good prison. Uh, I went, I've been in Ballstall, but how they lost my records, I don't know, something happened, but if you've been in, been in prison before, you go in the main wing, I kept my mouth shut, and uh, didn't say nothing, but I went to the other side, F and G, and F and G wing was a, uh, um, like, Unbelievable prison, unbelievable side of prison. It was more like a hotel than it was a prison. But, it, I mean, when I say it was a prison still, you know what I mean? You still got a bit of grief, you know? And uh, as I said, um, we've done a few things in there, bad things in there. Uh, but I went in there, there was some lifers. I was all had a fight within the scrubs. Uh, these guys, uh, these both guys from Birmingham. Uh, I'd all had a fight with the main one. Uh, I, I come unstuck. Uh, I got bashed up, but... Mate, I was second best, mate. He knew I was second best and all, and he, did, he wouldn't fight me again, but we'd become, we'd become right friends, yeah? And I, got, I went there, they was already there, lifers and first-timers. And uh, I got a good job in there, but in there, right? right, I'll tell you what, in there, you had to make yourself known. That's why I met uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Peace. Malcolm Peace, mate, um, this guy, right, this guy is a Welsh guy, and uh, Malcolm Peace, mate, he could, he could have it, mate. He could have it, Malcolm. I mean, he was only tiny. I think about five foot ten, five foot eight, five foot ten. His brother was a good professional fighter. Um, me and him used to play football together, and he was in a powerlifting team with me, Malcolm. He had massive legs, got really, really good squatter. And he had little arms, but this geezer could march on, yeah? He could march on, mate. I've seen him knock people out as, like, easy. Easy like nine pin, boom, bang, 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 bang. You knock them out easy. Um, and since um, I've been doing my uh, street fights, illegal fighting and all that, I've done a book, yeah, with a guy called Julian Davis and a book called Street Fighters. And uh, it's about, all. it's about, what, 30 of us in there, 20 of us in there. It's all about street fighters and people that could have it, yeah. And I'm one of the people that was in there that could have it. So please get check it out. If you don't think I can have it, don't check it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, um, I happened to see this guy in here called Malcolm Peace. 
Uh, I didn't really take a lot of notice, you know, because I always thought his name was Mickey Police. Different, isn't it? Mickey Police. I always thought his name was Mike, Mickey Police. So I never, ever thought it was the same guy. He looked different to me because he was with another guy, yeah? And then uh, he died. And then about, what, three months ago, four months ago, um, someone said, that's, that's the same guy, though. Right? And you know what? I'd even in my book all that time, and I could have got older than him. You know? it, it, it shocked me a bit, hurts me a bit, you know, because me and him were white pals in Alsby YP, and he could have it, and uh, I love him to death, and rest in peace, Malcolm, and uh, his family, and all that, uh, the same thing. And I was told that he can really, really have it, and everybody was petrified of him in Wales, and I could understand that. I can understand that he could march on. And uh, Alsby was a good nick for us all. I mean, we'd become uh, British and European champions, really. No, we're not. We'd become Southern Heavy champions uh, uh, at powerlifting. I mean, I was doing phenomenal weights. I mean, a lot of people don't believe it when I say this and that. I mean, I was doing 795, 795 pound deadlift as a kid. As a kid. What, 18, 19? As a kid, doing 795 pound they lift. I mean, I was doing it in my in my bolster as well. So, uh, you know, it's one of the things, isn't it? And, and and then I was quite good at benching. I mean, I think I was doing something like what 140, 150 for one rep on the bench. My squats was really bad. I mean, 140 kilos, not pounds. Kilo. Everything I'll talk about is kilos, yeah. But mind you, in them days, it wasn't kilos. It was all pounds. We worked in pounds. Um, we had this uh, screw there. Uh, he was like, he, he was a work screw, and they had a guy that worked with him called Ted Wayne, a uh, little half cast fella, uh, short, short guy. His guy had massive, massive legs. I mean, he had massive legs. I think he won, he won sort of some, some title, he won. Uh, he was phenomenal, phenomenal squatter, yeah? And this guy, his body was crisp, mate. The whole body was crisp. I mean, when he, got in the shower and you see this guy mate he was like tummy mass was like stood out two inches his shoulders were massive you know muscular he weighed about what i don't know ten and a half stone but powerful powerful and was squatting he was squatting not so much as uh, uh malcolm plot Ma malcolm uh, malcolm Ma malcolm peace but he was squatting big weights yeah for a little guy like that and unbelievable we had a we had a an, another guy in there come from uh, Portsmouth, what was his name? I uh, can't think of his name, come on, Portsmouth. This guy, uh, he was massive. He was fat, really big, fat guy, but solid, you know, like, not fat, solid. We would be as a YP, you know what I mean? Solid. And this guy, mate, he had a neck on him, must have been 30 inches, massive, massive, massive neck. And he talked like, that yeah way and, and mate massive yeah and he was he was squatting phenomenal phenomenal weights but it doesn't matter how much you, how much weights you're lifting it's about the poundage i think we had to give them like something like three pound per pound for three pound every every um uh three pound of work we had to give them i was we had to give them three pound or but i'm not quite sure anyway and we still won into prison and southern area chant titles as as body as weightlifters and we was kids you know not kids you're men young men yeah Alsby uh, was one of them prisons that you either didn't like it or it's like my mate yeah and but so uh, like it or hate it or whatever but i'm telling you it was the best as i am on a mark a yp you know, not best prison, like, I'm talking about a really, like, yeah, prison. But if you're going to go away, this is where you have to go away to, yeah? And uh, as I told you, a lot of people, what happened to me, and uh, this, that, and the other. And I told you about a guy called Dave Stone, uh, David Stone, uh, a nice, nice guy. We all worked in a cable shop, um, uh, doing, but with no, no cable machines. It was all done by a hammer and a bolster and uh, we had to take, take all the outside off and smash the lead and then get the cable and hit the cable with hammers so now and again you get a cable you've already smashed you put your hands down and go straight for your hands you know but that was what it was that was the job i loved the job yeah 
and there's a couple of guys in there, I forget their names, uh, that could really march on. I mean, you know, like as a kid, you think, you know, these kids could really march on, really wiry, uh, two brothers, uh, they could march on, mate. They could fucking have a row. No one really bothered them. They was just nice fellas. You'd never think in a million years that they could have a row, but they can have a row. I remember Mickey, I remember Mickey, <laughs> I remember Mickey, uh, Malcolm Peace, he knocked one of the spark out, and, uh, but they could have a row on these geezers, but that's not taking it off of them, but they could have a row, you know, but Malcolm could, was, could have a row over the top of that, you know what I mean? And at uh, this particular time, um, Dave Stone would tell us, we would sit down in our breaks, having a cup of tea or whatever it would be, and uh, tell us a story about him being nicked uh, for, for, for murder. And, it, you know, and, and it, made it, it made it so that he didn't do it. He was not guilty of this, this, this charge, and they just fitted him up, as they do in them days. It was very easy to fit people up in them days. It was very easy to fit people up now, but, but it's a lot harder, yeah? And anyway, uh, Dave Stone, um, he, wanted, he, was, he, was, he, he was, you know, he was about, just about really to get made up to a star, uh, to go to a big nick, uh, never, you know, that's what they call when people get made up as a star. Anyway, and you got you get a little yellow star on your, on your black jacket. And anyway, but he, he said he had about, what, two months to, to be made up. He said, look, Ray, he said, look, uh, and the guys in there was all sitting down. He said, look, I've got, I want to get out of here. In them days, there was no fences. It was only Mount Batten. It was only Mount Batten that put the fences up, yeah? You remember that, Mount Batten? He, uh, he was the one that put the fences up in all the prisons. Um, you know, a prison within a prison. Mount Batten was the one. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know. Anyway, um, so we can all thank Mount Batten. Thanks, mate. He died. Oh, they smashed him up, so well done to him. Anyway, um, cut a long story short. Um, then Dave Stone... Uh, said to us, look, mate, um, oh, we've got to get out, you know, we've got to get out, mate. You know, and to, all to us, there's quite a few of us. He said, I can't go back to a, a big prison. I'm never going to get out, and I'm not guilty of this. You know, he said, and he had a job, as I say, as a job as a forklift driver. And what it was, uh, we used to do cable, and so much cable that a lawyer used to come in once a week, and Dave Stone was on the forklift, and lift up and put load up, load up the motors with cables. I wish I knew where they went. <laughs> Not now, but then, yeah? So uh, anyway, so um, what we thought we'd all get up to is put a loads of um, barrels outside, because a lot of them, a lot of stuff is coming, barrels, copper and all that sort of thing. Other things we have to clean up, like, uh, like uh, um, what do you call them? Anyway, um, oh, fucking hell, sorry. I've, so carburetors and things like that, we had to smash up and take all this out and out, yeah. So we had a few barrels in there, and uh, we put the barrels outside, full up, yeah. But to roll them outside, got them with the foot, roll them outside. So the lorry wouldn't be parking outside the the the, uh, the factory where we worked. It has to park around the corner a bit. So if you park around the corner a bit, it blocks out the view from whatever, and it, just, it blocks out a view, a certain view, so you couldn't see the wall, yeah. Anyway, so what we decided to do is have a row, have a big fight in, in, in the shop, which we did. Everybody had a big fight in the shop. It wasn't one person, it was a load of people who decided to do it. And then a big punch up in there. And uh, David got on the forklift, mate, and he was gone. Whew. Straight through the thing, straight across, uh, straight across the, uh, the, 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 uh, the football pit, the football uh, tarmac, straight on there, whoosh, lift up on it, whoosh, over the wall, gone. Dave was gone for about, what, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years, and uh, I remember being in prison, and, and it came on the news that Dave Stone had been uh, uh, re 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 recaptured after 30 years. Come on, 30 years. And, but the thing is, what he'd done, he, I think he either owned a club or he was running a club, you know, under another name. He had a fight on the door with some people, and uh, one died, and uh, obviously so the police got involved, uh, took him in, and uh, anyway, he gave a false name. When they fingerprinted him, uh, they found it was Dave Stone, uh, convicted murderer, 
and uh, an escapee. So obviously, so he had to go back. And I think he got, well, I don't know what he got, but he, I mean, if he's still in there, Dave, and he got a phone, mate, um, you know, um, it's Rayo, and I, you know, mate, I'm just scared for you, you know, or if you're out, Dave, uh, let me know you got, let me know you are, mate. I don't know, you know what I mean? It's a long old time ago, and uh, it's a shame. It's just a shame. I don't think he was, he was definitely not guilty of the first one, but obviously, so, whatever happened the second one, we don't know. But anyway, uh, and then, and then we, uh, after that, it was like uh, everybody was like uh, banged up, and there was big thing about it coming in, taking us out, and talking to us. And uh, there was a guy in there called Pardo, yeah? And uh, I've told you before about two again. There was a guy in there called Pardo, my YP, yeah? What, in, in, in the YP, in, the, in, in where we were, yeah, was, it's like a house. You know, one side, it was a woman's, ex-woman's prison. One side, one side was the first timers, the other side was the lifers, yeah? But we was to congregate on, in, the, in the dining room. You know, there's a billiard table in there. It was quite good in there, you know what I mean? And a big gymnasium in there and everything, yeah? But not 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 weights, not big weights, but we had to go over to the main wing to do the weights, yeah? And this guy, Pardo, what he'd done, he'd, um, he was a guy doing life, but he got into uh, Alsby YP as a young man because he couldn't be put in a, he couldn't be put in a, a, a youth centre, a youth uh, thing, because of what the charge he was on and being so dangerous. And what he done, or what he did, was cut women's uh, breasts off, yeah? Cut their breasts off and uh, empty them and fill them um, and use them as tobacco pouches. And uh, what sort of man is that, you know what I mean? And they used to really uh, do other things, sexy things to women that uh, we got to hear about. And, um, mate, it just makes you feel sick, even to talk about it now. Uh, he looked, he looked about 50. He had red hair that come down at the side, bald on top. Up, he was up uh, the screws backsides 24-7, always round him. I think he must have been doing things to the screws or the screws for doing things to him. He was that way inclined, you know, and uh, he just wasn't, be about screws. And something happened one day, and it kicked off, and um, the lifers, the guys on about in Birmingham, they, they nearly killed him. They set about him, and they nearly killed him. They smashed him to pieces. I don't know what they'd done it with. I think they'd done it with boo sticks, boo stick handles that are cut off with sharp edges, stabbed all his legs, stabbed all his back. I mean, if they'd appealed to something, a bit, uh, an organ or something, he'd have died. But he was very lucky he didn't die. Uh, he was took out, he was took out of prison, and that was it. And then uh, there's another guy in there, I forget his name, his kid's young kid, young boy, nice fella. I was a cleaner. Uh, I was to clean the, the, the toilets, clean the washrooms, you had to clean all the brass, all the copper, you had to get on your hands and knees on the floor, put the polish down, scrub your floors, no machines, and then get a big bumper and bump it, yeah? Massive bumper. And uh, it was massive, this bumpers. People remember bumpers, uh, comment me, yeah? And uh, yeah, it's to clean, it's polished. It was like, the place was so clean. It was like, I can, unbelievable. And uh, this screw, it was a wipe, it was a, a SO, I forget his name, but he's nicked me a few times. Uh, let me tell you about the few times he's nicked me, nicked me for abuse to him, not, what, not, not, uh, not doing a job proper, but he, he, I must have, I've worked my bollocks off, yeah. He said, you ain't doing it proper, you're nicked. You know, he said, love nicking me. He's one of people, and when you first get nicked, yeah, oh, I'm gonna go down the block. But this block, yeah, in Owlsbury, used to hold the train robbers. It was so secure. It was such a secure block, yeah. I mean, ones are secure, which is stunning, but this is secure, secure, because secure. And uh, anyway, the first time I went down there, went down, he took me down there, and uh, I walked back, bumped straight into the screw. I'll never forget certain screws, I forgot their numbers over the years, even the screws have just come out of prison, mounts, it? but these two screws, I'll never forget because the way they were, yeah? They were like wicked, you know what I mean? And yeah, one, as you walked in there, Bishop, 
ex, you can see he was ex-military, maybe in the Marines, maybe whatever, special forces, you don't know, but he was a big guy. Big, tall guy, maybe not special, but he was a big, tall guy. Big, big, big sloppy jacket. Horrible, horrible man. Down here, the 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 hat was the 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 peak was over his nose. Couldn't really see him. Walk down there. What's he do straight away? Gets over you. Stand to attention when I'm talking to you. Right, you stand up to attention. Hands down. Right, he comes by by the side. Gets hold of your arm inside your arm, your muscle, your inside, and pinches the fat. Or not no fat, but your muscle pinches the skin. I mean, fucking bruise all your arms. I mean, it's nothing worse. It's so painful, you know what I mean? And as soon as you say, you've got to say, no, leave off, governor. And it gets worse, yeah? And then they do the inside of your legs. They give us a fucking lunatic, yeah? And then you stand outside the cell. In the cell, there's a mattress on the floor. A mattress, don't forget, this, this, this cell's empty. This cell, no one's in that cell, but you're going to go in it, so all stuff is still in the cell. Mattress on the floor, a table, which is about two inches thick, with his big, thick uh, chair, a locker, and that's it. Mattress on the floor, toilet, piss pot, aluminium. <sighs> right, go in there, you go in there, and you think, fucking hell. Right, mattress out, locker out, Chair, table, put it in the middle. Fuck it. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Put it all out. Then he comes in, opens about five minutes later, sitting down there. Get off the chair. Right, this is your job. This is your job. You, you're going to get, you're going to see the governor in the morning. And you're going to stay down there. That goes without saying. Right? How do you feel about that? You're going to stay down there, maybe seven days, maybe 14 days, maybe 21 days, but you're staying down there, and it'll be CC. I thought, fucking hell, I don't want to stay down there, mate. And then another screw come in, stone, with a big, bushy, anybody who must remember this, people have been, big, bushy moustache, very, very regimental, talk a very, you know, hell, oh, yes, very regimental, yeah. He was another horrible person, yeah, but he had his own horrible ways, like dishing out the food, and slamming it on his trays, and doing things, doing things, not put, not doing things to your food, but doing things, well, doing things to your food, really, just slamming it on, and never out was going, and chucking your bread on it, and your butter on it, and all this, and, and you know, and chucking it on the floor outside your door, and all, I, anyway, but his thing, what he used to do, he was in uh, uh, like the library, maybe once a week, he used to go in the library, or maybe twice a week, I don't quite remember. But when you go in the library, magazines, books, but not so much mags, books. And what he ate, they used to do in there, which they done in there, you get involved, you get involved in a, in a, in a book, and I, I mean, I couldn't read. I'm quite sort of dyslexic anyway. So it didn't really matter to me, but it did in a way, because it took me a long time to try and get into a book anyway. And then what they'd do, it'd be page 10, you turn over and it'd be page 20. So they'd nick 10 pages out or make f five pages out. Why? That is the way they punished you, yeah? Like kids, man, like kids. But anyway, you're in your cell, your first day in your cell, you've got everything out, the mattress, your lockers out. All of a sudden, you've been when you come to Owlsbury Prison, you'll notice that on the in all the landings is bins. You don't have plastic put in sort of bit in days. You don't have plastic bags put in bins. You know, you ain't got none of that. But what you should do in the bins was all outside, inside was gleaming like glass, mate, shining, and you think, Christ. Who does that, you know what I mean? But you realise, the person who does that is you, or the people you're with. And then he comes in your cell with a dustbin that's maybe gleaming anyway, and he's giving you emery cloth, wet and dry, and your job is gleam it. 
claim it worse than what it is. Better than what it is, sorry. Better than what it is, claim it. Well, then he come in with maybe a, a, a right dirty old one, and you've got to do the same with that. But don't forget, that cell, they've got little windows up there, maybe, what, nine inches by four inches. Slide open, two of these. You're in there, wet and dry, sandpaper, emery cloth or whatever it is, and you're scrubbing these things down. And that is your cell. That is your cell. So when that goes out, right, you're sitting in there and all that fucking dust and shit, and you're sleeping in there, what dust is there? This is what it is. Now and again, they brought a beam, boom in there, and you sweep all the shit out. You're sweeping it out, mopping it out, mop, then you put mop it out. But all that dust and shit in there is no good for you, mate. In the morning, you go to the governor. I mean, as you plead, Ellie, guilty, sir. Guilty of uh, abuse, yeah? Yeah, okay. First time down here? Yes, sir. First time down here, we've got to teach you a lesson. 21, no, sorry, 14 days CC. Solitary confinement to your cell. You don't come out, you ain't going to do nothing, but you'll get exercise, yeah? God, oh, fuck me. Now, all this time, you're getting grief from the screws, you're getting grief from Bishop, you're getting grief from Stone. Stone's pinching your arms. No, Bishop's pinching your arms. Stone's coming for your let to, to your spile. Get off the floor. Sit on the chair. Sit on the chair. You're not doing. Don't fall asleep. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. And then you get exercise, yeah? Listen, mate, you won't believe the exercise. Not so much the exercise, it's what's in the exercise yard. You've got a yard in there with a big bit of grass in the middle, right? That looks over about, what, 10 cells? 10 cells? The block's away from the prison. Well, it's not away from the prison, but it stands out from the prison, yeah? You've got this big, this grass. On the grass, you've got like uh, these plaques, yeah? These plaques, I think they're, they're stone or marble. And on these plaques, you've got names, but you can't really see the names because it's old with the weather and bits and pieces, but there's names on them, yeah? Plaques, and those are plaques around the grass, bits and pieces. But massive place. And yeah, by the wall, by the wall before, you, not the wall going out, but the wall around the block, yeah? It's all grass and this, that, and the other, and earth, and, they, and they've got plaques here as well. And on the wall, as you walk around, you notice that the wall, they've all got women's names carved in, like Doris, L whatever, Doris, Lila, Louise, all these sort of names, yeah? Old fashioned names. And what it was, that when I asked the screw, didn't ask him after I was down the block, and I asked the screw when I finished after, what's it all about down there? He was telling me that, that, that years ago, they used to hang women, I think it was in Alsby YP, they used to hang them in the, in the prison and bury them in that yard and keep them in the block and let them walk around the block and that's it, you know, on the death things. And you're thinking, fucking oh, Christ almighty, I'm in that cell where someone's been in that cell and they're walking around the yard and they're dead. You know, it frightens your life out of you. You're thinking, Christ, I mean, there's ghosts and all that. I mean, you hear about ghosts and all that, but it ain't good, is it? You know what I mean? And you're thinking, crikey, to kill, to kill people, to kill women in there, hang women in there, you know what I mean? And all them people's things, plaques are, are in there. Yeah? And uh, Owlsby, like, as I said, uh, was an okay nick. And uh, as I say, but there's a few there's, there's stories in there. And... Uh, this screw, this SO screw that was involved uh, with Pardo and he got involved with the other kid and he was getting, making his kid do, do things to him uh, that we all found out about and uh, he had to be sorted out and uh, these geezers are lifers, they sorted his geezer out and uh, he got sorted out big time, big time, he didn't die, got sorted out but he, ain't, he didn't work there no more and uh, after that, um, about three days after it all happened, where everyone's looking out the window, and we see all these uh, guys from Birmingham being marched across the yard, handcuffed, hands up their back, I mean, bullied, bullied across the yard, yeah? And I thought, fucking hell, you know what I mean? They've been 
they're the ones being chucked out for whatever happened there, you know, there's, there's a lot of us involved in it. But anyway, they kept their mouth shut and they'd gone. And Aylesbury was a funny old prison for, for, for me. Uh, you know, you had a swimming pool there and all this, that and the other, and you had to get in there naked and the ice and went and broke the ice. But what I used to like, you know, when we used to play football, I used to play football, believe it or not, I was quite a good footballer. But I was, I was quite good in goal as well, yeah? And uh, we used to walk, we used to come out the gate, come out the gate, come out the prison through a gate onto a field, which uh, big roadway, walk across the road to the field, filled that barbed wire, uh, not, no f fences, because fences was, was a soldier mount batten, but it was a wall, a little wall with barbed wire in it, and that was it. And go out there and play football. And then come back in there, well, no one ever went, I suppose that they, they sorted it out in a way that you get captured, you have wind, whatever, yeah. So then, then it was like um, coming out of my YP, and uh, you know, as when 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 um, when I come out of my YP, I've all been working in the foot market at that time, and uh, Colin Cracknell, uh, Mickey Nall, uh, I forget, and someone else used to come up and see me. And my YP bring me up with sweets and chocolates and all that. Used to have to eat on the visit, yeah. And now I never forget. There was a guy there called Nugent, a yeah, black guy called Nugent. He's very very gifted, black guy, unbelievable. And two white guys used to come and visit him and bring up fruit in these little plastic containers, uh, bags, and they used to unzip them and eat his fruit there. They are obviously gay, and they used to maybe, I don't know, love this guy, and maybe they was going on the money when they got out, you know. Nugent, his name, and uh, yeah, it just make me laugh, mate. See him in the shower, he was always turning your back towards him. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anyway, and then, uh, so my mate Mickey Knoll and Colin Cracknell used to come visit me, so when I come out, I got my job back in the market, and uh, this is when my, obviously this is when it all started. Anyway, I've got big, big stories about everything like that. Um, so please like and subscribe today and and, and all that. And tomorrow, uh, I'll carry on from now and it goes on and on. Go on for quite some time, yeah? Okay, this is Ray Bamiel. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.